Hi there, my name is Cole, and today on Investigate, Explore, Discover, we're going to be looking at how inflammatory arthritis severity is reduced by hormone fragments. Now, inflammatory arthritis is a pretty broad catch-all category. One of the diseases that I want to focus on in this category, though, is rheumatoid arthritis. And rheumatoid arthritis affects about 1% of the global population. However, it's not evenly distributed. There are places around the world where there is an increased prevalence of rheumatoid arthritis. These places are the Americas, uh, Europe, and around India. If you're to look at the prevalence of rheumatoid arthritis compared to other disease, the discrepancy is huge. In fact, in the United States, the prevalence of rheumatoid arthritis is similar to the prevalence of five other autoimmune diseases combined. So the prevalence of rheumatoid arthritis is comparable to the prevalence of lupus, multiple sclerosis, type 1 diabetes, Crohn's disease, and psoriasis combined. Not only is there a unequal distribution of this disease across the world, but there's also an unequal distribution between men and women. Women are affected by rheumatoid arthritis about, about three to four times more than men are, and the prevalence of this disease increases with age. This disease is a chronic disabling condition often causing pain and deformity. In fact, within 10 years of onset, at least 50% of patients in the developed countries are unable to hold down a full-time job. So not only does this affect people's ability to work, but it's also an additional cost on their life. Across the world, the lowest estimate I could find that rheumatoid arthritis costs is at least $128 billion per year. In countries like the United States, the direct associated cost with rheumatoid arthritis is about twelve and a half thousand dollars per person per year, and in country and in Canada, this cost is decreased to about fifty five hundred dollars a year. Now these are just costs directly associated with rheumatoid arthritis and does not factor in comorbidities. Uh, it doesn't factor in the cost of uh, drug treatments, and it doesn't uh, factor in the cost of mental health. Now that we know how many people rheumatoid arthritis affects. I want to tell you what exactly rheumatoid arthritis is. So rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic systemic disease that affects the joints, connective tissues, muscles, tendons, and fibrous tissues. It causes bone erosion, a swollen synovial membrane, cartilage breakdown, and reduced joint space. You might have seen somebody with rheumatoid arthritis and just weren't sure of what was going on with them. But a common characteristic, especially in the hands, is joints going off at odd angles. And this is because the uh, joints themselves are swollen and inflamed. You may not have met someone personally, but I'm pretty certain you've seen depictions of rheumatoid arthritis. One extreme depiction is from Futurama in the disease bonitis. As I mentioned, rheumatoid arthritis is a systemic disease. And in our bodies, we have proteins that act systemically. Some of these proteins are called hormones. And there's two of them that I want to focus on today. The first hormone I want to focus on is called parathyroid hormone. And this hormone is released when your body senses low concentrations of calcium in the blood. So this causes the concentration of calcium in your blood to increase to normal levels. Uh, parathyroid hormone shares a receptor with another protein. This other protein, so imaginatively named, is parathyroid hormone related protein. And parathyroid hormone-related protein, in addition to being a mouthful, has many interactions with systems all around the body. For example, it regulates bone development and mammary gland formation. Now, parathyroid hormone-related protein can be broken down into smaller peptides. And there has been some research on these peptides in the past. The peptide, though, that I want to focus on is on the C-terminal end and called osteostatin. And what we know is that it plays a role in bone regeneration. In the bone microenvironment, there are actually cells that help mediate this process, and there's a lot of different cells working together. I want to focus in on a few of them just to give you an overview of kind of what's going on. So osteoblasts are cells found in the bone microenvironment that actually help create more bone, which increases bone density. There are chondrocytes, which help create cartilage, and there are osteoclasts. Now osteoclasts actually resorb the bone, so they decrease bone density. And these cells can be affected by many different things in your body, whether it be uh, hormones or other cells. 
Some cells that play a role on these bone cell development are immune cells. And we have lots of immune cells in our bodies, and they're broken up into two major categories. You have your innate response cells, which have a fast acting nonspecific response to pathogens, and you have your adaptive response cells, which have a slower initiating, more specific response to pathogens. Adaptive response cells are, are commonly also responsible for autoimmune diseases. I want to focus in on the lymphoid cells today, and in particular, we're going to focus in on the T cells. And T cells can cause secretion of pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory cytokines. So now that you have a bit of background, there's the important question to ask, which is why do I care? Why is this important? This is important for a number of reasons. First off, we're learning about new uses of parathyroid hormone related protein and its peptides, which we can then build upon the prior knowledge that we have to see if this could be a helpful rheumatoid arthritis treatment. So what we're talking about today is based around this paper here by Nakarwan et al. And it's got a wordy title. The title of this paper is Osteostatin Inhibits Collagen-Induced Arthritis by Regulation of Immune Activation, Pro-Inflammatory Cytokines, and Osteoclastogenesis. What these scientists were trying to look at in their paper is they were trying to investigate the role that parathyroid hormone-related protein could have on inflammatory joint destruction. Because they, there was already evidence that shows that osteostatin has bone regenerative properties. So they performed a bunch of experiments multiple times to get these results. And what they found is super cool. They used a mouse model of rheumatoid arthritis to discover all of these. So what they found is that in their model, when they added osteostatin, it actually reduces arthritis severity in their paws. And when they looked at their paws in particular, they were able to find an increase in anti-inflammatory cytokines and a decrease in pro-inflammatory cytokines as a result of the introduction of osteostatin. Furthermore, they looked in the blood of these animals and in the blood they found that osteostatin reduces reactive serum antibodies and proteins that, that are known to cause increased inflammation in rheumatoid arthritis. They also looked in the lymph nodes and were able to find that osteostatin decreased T cell proliferation and activation by looking at the number of T cells in the lymph nodes and the cytokines that they produced. And furthermore, the most interesting thing that they found, at least in my opinion, is that when they gave osteostatin to these mice, it actually reduced the bone loss present from this disease. And they found that this was mediated through a decrease in the amount of osteoclasts present in the bones. So these are some really cool findings. Uh, once again, why are they important? Well, they're important for a bunch of reasons. First off, we get to understand more about biological systems in the context of rheumatoid arthritis. And by looking at this, or these scientists have found that there are new uses for parathyroid hormone related fragments. In fact, pulling on prior knowledge, uh, parathyroid hormone related peptides may actually have some advantages for drug discovery and how they function. Additionally, by finding that osteostatin decreases pro-inflammatory cytokines and bone loss, this can hopefully be used to help further progress future treatments for people suffering from rheumatoid arthritis. And altogether, what the authors summed up is that they support the interest of osteostatin for treatment for inflammatory joint conditions. So with all new discoveries in science, there are always more questions to be asked, especially in light of new information. So when reading through this paper, there are a few that I thought of, but there are always more. So first off, they did their studies in mice. So how does this translate to humans? It's an important question. Furthermore, when I delved a little bit deeper into how they performed these studies, I found that all of these results were from male mice. Now, because rheumatoid arthritis affects women much more than men, wouldn't it be important to see how this treatment affects female mice as well? So how do they compare? Additionally, there are already treatments out there to help people with rheumatoid arthritis. How does this treatment fit in with those other treatments? Can they be used together? Should they not be used together? What, how would that look like? So those are just what I thought of. 
but you most likely thought of something different. So what did you think about? What are some questions that you'd like to see this research further address? Additionally, let me know if you're interested in any other immunology related topics. What would you be interested in hearing new discoveries about? Let me know in the comments below. Ultimately, I hope you learned something and more importantly, you had fun doing so. If you did, give this video a like. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.